All right, uh, let's talk a little bit about minor blues. Uh, most of the things that we've talked about in this course has been over major blues, uh, but you know, kind of like the thrill is gone type minor blues is also very hip and you know, it's great to have some great ideas over that too. Uh, you know, just like we talked about when you're transitioning from your one chord to your four chord, you can think of your one chord as the five of that four chord. And you can do this in a minor blues too. So if I'm playing in an A minor blues, eventually I'm gonna go to the four chord D minor. So for that last measure, that fourth measure, as I'm traversing into the four chord, I can change my thought process and think of the A minor now as an A7 chord. And that would bring me to that D minor chord. Similar to what we talked about, or pretty much the same thing that we talked about earlier when you're transitioning from a one dominant to a four dominant chord, only in this case it's minor. Now, stylistically, we could use, you know, some jazzy scales and stuff, but I tend to like to keep this a little more traditional. And one of the uh, best scales, I think, to use in this scenario over that dominant chord as you're transitioning is the harmonic minor scale. And in this case, when you have a dominant chord that is resolving to a minor chord, I like to play harmonic minor from the resolution. So the resolution would be D. So in this case, I would play D harmonic minor. And that would lead you directly to that D minor chord. So for that fourth measure, I would play D harmonic minor leading back into the D. Now once I get to the D, I think I'm just kind of back in A minor again and, and we're back to where we started. Now I purposely kind of put this uh, transition, this turnaround in this particular chord progression because like we talked about in the previous lesson, we have this kind of Aeolian flat five that we were playing. We we're kind of modifying that blues scale, right? Well now this will work perfectly because the turnaround here is a F dominant nine chord. And I can use that scale over that chord. And then the next chord is an E7 chord. Now the E7 is the five going back to the A minor. So here I could use A harmonic minor. So, you know, I, of course you want to blend these things in. You want to keep it tasteful. But you might want to practice all these devices maybe separately for a while and then get it to where you can kind of blend it into your playing. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to play over the track and I'm going to, uh, you know, play in those specific moments, those specific scales. And then um, and I'm not going to play in the other parts. I'm just going to play in those specific moments so you can hear the result of those scales being played over those chords and then hopefully resolving it into that uh, one chord minor. Let's try that. Okay, here comes that Aeolian flat five. On the fourth measure. Now the Aeolian flat five. A harmonic. Another A harmonic. Okay, so for the rest of the, the stuff, I will probably just be playing, you know, kind of your typical kind of blues, but I wanna just play those scales at that strategic time so you could hear the impact. Now, you know, in some cases, that dominant chord might not even be there. It might not be in the chord progression. So it might just be playing A minor the whole time. So you're actually gonna imply that A7 chord 
in your lines, which will create some nice movement and nice tension. And of course, then you'll want to resolve it into that D minor, especially when you're transitioning from the A to the D. And the same thing can be said for transitioning from the E back to the A, right? You always want to kind of resolve it back into its root sound, so to speak. All right, so with any scale, uh, you also have a series of chords or triads or arpeggios that you can draw from. Uh, so, you know, you can obviously play the harmonic minor scale in those tr strategic places that I mentioned, but you can also look at some of the chords that are in those scales and use maybe some of those arpeggios. So, for example, if I wanted to kind of get that A dominant 7 sound as I transition into that D minor chord, I'm going to look for arpeggios from the D harmonic minor scale that are going to have that C sharp note in them. Because that's the major third of that A7 chord, and it's going to really give you that pull back to that D note. It's going to bring your ear to that next chord. So there's a couple of really strong ones uh, that you can find within the harmonic minor scale that give you that pull. Uh, probably the first one I could think of is a minor major 7 arpeggio. So in, if I was to harmonize a D harmonic minor scale, the first chord would be a D minor major 7. <laughs> And on its own, it kind of has a spacey sound, but if I put it into context of an arpeggio, uh, that would be a nice little, uh, something I could play as a lick, or I could combine it with some of the scale tones and make kind of a phrase out of it. So let's take a look at that shape for a second. Uh, basically, if you take a D minor seven arpeggio, if you already know that, all you're doing is you're just moving that flat seven, the C, up to C sharp. And you can do that in both octaves. So sometimes what I like to do is maybe just play a little bit of that arpeggio and blend it in with some of the scale. And then resolve it into that D. That's, that's a really great way that you could play it. Another one that would work fantastic is obviously an A7 arpeggio, right? Because That's kind of the chord that we're implying there. So now that's the obvious one, but you're kind of missing out on a little bit of that harmonic minor sound. So I like to kind of uh, add a little bit of that harmonic minor sound into it. So let's say if I took an A7 uh, arpeggio, just one octave, just... And then add some of the scale tones in there to it to give it really that really nice harmonic minor sound, and that would make that stick out a little bit more. Another really great arpeggio that we kind of talked about earlier is the diminished arpeggio. Uh, if we harmonize our D harmonic minor scale, the seventh chord ends up being C sharp diminished. Now we know now that uh, diminished chords are symmetrical. So we can move that around, but we could also play an arpeggio off of that, right? Just that diminished seventh arpeggio. So these are a couple of really nice strategies. You could play the D minor major seven. You could play the A dominant seven and then add maybe some of the notes of the scale to it. Or you could play that C sharp diminished, which will kind of give you like an A seven flat nine sound. And then you want to resolve it into the destination chord, which in this case would be D. Now all this would also apply to the E7 chord, but just in A harmonic minor, right? So you could use A minor major seven. You could use, um, you know, you could use the uh, G sharp diminished arpeggio. You could use an E7 arpeggio and add some of the scale tones. So same concept. Now you're going to do it with a different scale, of course, because the resolution is different. Now, one other chord that is uh, I mentioned is we kind of talked about when we were talking about that Aeolian flat five is this um, F dominant nine chord that I have in the chord progression. This is a great candidate if you want to use some arpeggios for that augmented triad that we talked about. That works fantastic over it. So you see what I'm doing is, is I have the scale, but I'm also drawing from that scale and cherry picking some of the arpeggios and triads that I think will work really well in the context that I'm using the scale in. So. Let's go ahead and uh, play over the track bit, and I'm going to try to implement some of these sounds that I was talking about and also just blend it in with some good old-fashioned blues licks, and uh, let's see if we can make this thing work.
Let's go. All right, let's try to go ahead and play over the track. Um, and I'm going to throw it in and just mix it in with uh, some of my just typical kind of blue sounds. And what I'm going to be doing is, is as I transition from the A to the D, like on that fourth measure, I'm going to play D harmonic minor leading into the D. Now, once I get there, I might play a little bit of D minor blues or back into some A minor blues. And then over the F9 chord, I'm going to play that little scale that we talked about. That little Aeolian flat five scale over that F chord. And the reason why that works so good is because the flat seven of that F chord is that flat five of A. So that way I don't have to kind of change my brain. I can just kind of still be thinking A. And then over the E7 chord, I'm going to play some A harmonic minor. And then resolving back into A. And then there's one more at the 12th measure. There's one more E7 chord that I can use that A harmonic minor back over again, bringing me back into the top of the song. All right, let's try it. All right, let's take a look at some of the devices and some of the lines I played there and what my thought process was as I was playing along. Uh, so as I described, we're kind of using that harmonic minor scale as a five to one move, and it sounds really nice uh, in this context. It's not so far out sounding that it takes you out of, this, of the sound of the music, right? Minor blues has this really kind of cool mood and romantic sound to, to it, so I don't want to get too crazy with it. I want to kind of keep it in that wheelhouse, so I think these devices all sound really good. So what I did to start off there is I just started off with some simple A minor blues, right? And then I'm kind of anticipating that four chord coming. And so I played just a little piece to start off with of this D minor major seven arpeggio. <laughs> And then you can see that little D minor triad or this D minor chord here, and I just want to resolve it into one of those notes, either the D notes, always nice, of course, and the minor third, even the fifth, which is A, right? So that's always a great choice. Uh, as I traversed on, and when I went to the four chord, just played some of that. Uh, it's a little bit of D minor blues, A minor blues, just kind of blending those things together. And then over that F9 chord, I, I decided to try that little uh, augmented triad that we talked about. And to me, that sounds really nice. It's kind of a little bit outside of the sound, but uh, has a really cool texture to it. And then over the E7 chord, I played a little bit of that diminished arpeggio that is found in uh, A harmonic minor, which would be a G sharp diminished. And then you resolve it back into the A. 
And then there's that one more turnaround as we come back to the A, there's another E7 chord. Uh, what I basically did there is I just played straight up an E7 arpeggio. <laughs> resolved it back into my A minor. So that always sounds really good. Now, of course, there's a lot of things to draw from here. I'm really kind of just scratching the surface, you know, using the dominant arpeggios or the diminished arpeggios or those minor major sevens. They all work, so I would explore all of them. But really, you have a, a, a big wealth of resources to draw from there when you're using these harmonic minor scales. So don't think that you just have to kind of go up and down the scale. You can certainly use some of these really interesting sounds, okay? Um, and, and basically, as I went on, I, I tried to mix it up just a little bit. Now, here's what's cool. Uh, for example, on that F9 chord, if you remember, I talked earlier about how I like to kind of mix up this little top four uh, sequence here. So I wanted to throw that in there so you could hear how that actually works in context. It's that little four notes on a string sequence that can sometimes be a little, you know, a little tricky to kind of phrase with, but I did kind of the outside and then the inside and then slid down into that augmented triad. It just creates a really nice line. Really sounds great over that chord there. Now, when it comes to playing some of these diminished arpeggios, you know, it can get a little confusing because, you know, they're, they're symmetrical and you can move them around. It's really the same shape, kind of copied and pasted around. So I want to be able to ground it to something, maybe something of the chord that allows me to see it. So, for example, when I see that E7 chord, I know that I can play that diminished arpeggio from the third of that chord. And also from the flatted seventh of that chord, which would be D in this case. So I think that's another important thing is to develop a strategy because some of these shapes, you know, because they repeat, you can see them all over the place. It's like, well, how am I going to find these things kind of in the heat of the battle? And like I've mentioned before, I always try to use chord shapes, like where does that note relate to the chord? So I can see the chord and then I can just hopefully just jump right into whatever sound I want to go to. In this case, I kind of like to pivot off the major third, that G sharp, and also the flatted seventh. And that particular shape, of course, could be moved up here so I could see it from the fifth and also from that flat two. And then resolve it into some kind of A minor. So I think as you're practicing this stuff, as we're getting a, a bit complicated here, you want to think about strategies of how you're going to be able to see some of this more technical stuff as it relates to maybe something that you already know. So if you can attach it to something that you already know and that you've been playing for, for a number of years, then hopefully it will reveal itself to you a lot quicker rather than just trying to grab it out of the thin air, so to speak. So that's always my strategy anyway. I always try to see how the complex things relate to the simple things that I might already know hoping that it will make it a little simpler. So try some of those strategies, try some of those sounds, and hopefully you can uh, get you know, a little bit of these more sophisticated sounds into your playing. And uh, I'll see you next time around.